The following podcast contains spoilers and words such as done and bother. Mate, did we watch a thing this week? Yeah, we did. Hey, thanks for joining us. This, as you would probably know, is where you watched a thing. Uh, that means I'm Topher, he's Billy. Billy, how are you? Mate, I'm really good. How are you doing? Fine. Thank you. Fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Just fine. <laughs> Just fine. Like the MCU. Oh, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited to talk to you about this one. Most listeners of the show will know that neither of us are huge fans of the MCU. I think it's fair to say that, as you said, we both think it's fine. <laughs> I like them. I've seen them all. But Have you seen all of them? Yeah. I've not. I think I've, I've definitely seen more than half, but I know I've missed Hulk. Uh, I think I've only seen two of the Iron Men's. I haven't seen any of the Captain Americas except for Civil War, which, let's face it, that's Avengers. That's Avengers. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so I, I do have some catching up to do. But, uh, you know, I, I I mean, there's 25 films now, 24 films. You're going to have some good ones. You're going to have some bad ones. That's just the way it's going to go. <laughs> so All of large numbers suggests <laughs> that that is true. So, let's find out where this one falls for us then. So, we are, of course, talking about Black Widow, a 2021 American superhero film uh, produced by Marvel Studios and Walt Disney. It's the 24th film in the MCU. It's directed by Kate Shortland from a screenplay with Eric Pearson. And it stars Scarlett Johansson, Florence Pugh, David Harbour, O.T. Fagbeni, William Hurt, Ray Winston, and Rachel Weiss. And what is it about, Toph? What is it about? <laughs> You're struggling there, aren't you? <laughs> it's about um is is it about Marvel Studios making up for something they probably should have done a while ago? Having a female superhero film? Well, they've done that once, you know. <laughs> I mean they've doubled it, I guess. Um what it's really about is setting up Florence Pugh, I suppose. Absolutely it is. And this is we'll get into it. That's kinda my main beef with the film, is that this it's not a Black Widow film, and that's fine. I don't care. I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, it's not what it says on the tin. I think that the filmmakers think they're making a, more of a Black Widow film than they actually are, though, because she is easily the least interesting character in this film. <laughs> but if, if you're going to have a real, like, if you're a real um, Natasha Romanoff head, then I could imagine you being a bit shirty that you finally get her standalone film, and it's kind of just about her being re- getting replaced in front of our eyes. Yeah, yeah. I just think, and in I don't know why, I actually was kind of excited for this film. This was the first MCU film in a very long time that I was actually looking forward to. And in hindsight, I kind of don't know why, because I think that there is an inherent flaw there that was always going to stop this film from being good, and that is the fact that it is a prequel. And we know that the character is now dead. We know that she doesn't die in this film, though. But they're really not doing anything to build this character. The first hour where it is just Natasha Romanoff is easily the worst part of the film. And it really picks up for me once we introduce David Harbour and Florence Pugh's character. And I think that that is such a shame that that's the way that this film went. That just Black Widow is boring. She's dull. She doesn't really have anything to do in this film. I think- Look, for me, it's not as much of an issue as the fact that we know that a few years from now, in terms of the timeline of this film, she will no longer be alive. Because when it comes to most superhero films, where it's like, well, even though this person or being whatever is up against potentially world-defeating forces, you know they're going to stay alive. So it doesn't matter when it's the other way. So, like... I'm fine to just sit there for a couple of hours and watch her be alive for the time being. Yeah. It's, um, I, the, I, I think if, if I was going to have a a beef and be like, oh, I think she kind of got dudded out of this, it's the fact that they they finally gave her her own film and didn't make her the most interesting person in it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that, that that's – I have no problem with the fact knowing that she dies, but I feel like there could have been more to actually develop – her in this film still you know you could still treat her as a traditional character with character development and i just i would argue they ignored i would argue that they kind of 
D developer to a degree. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll come to it. I, but I would agree. Yeah. Where are you on? Where are you on ScarJo? Because I'm, I'm a fan. I know people that aren't, and like, yeah. and like, don't rate her. And I think quite often it doesn't take a lot of unpacking there to be like, have you seen Lost in Translation uh, or Ghost World. Under the Skin or yeah. Marriage Story? And invariably, the answers. If if they're not a fan, they're like, nah. And I'm like, okay, well then, shut up. Yeah, Scarlett Johansson is one of those people that I feel kind of bad for, and I shouldn't because she's fucking famous. She's doing fine. <laughs> but in the same way that for a very, very long time, people wouldn't treat Leonardo DiCaprio with respect because he's just too pretty that people just didn't think of him as a serious actor. And Scarlett is a little bit the same. You know, she came onto the scene quite young. She's obviously still a very attractive woman. These days, she is most known for Black Widow and the MCU, which is kind of popcorn cinema. But yeah, I, I'm quite the fan. I think that she's very, very good. And I think in these movies, she certainly gives it what she can. Her and Leo are doing fine. Yeah. It's a shame for her that in this film- not only is her character not treated that well, but she is up against Florence Pugh, who, in my opinion, is probably one of the greatest actresses that has emerged onto the scene in the last five years. Mm. Um, I heard one, before I'd seen this film, I heard one complaint from somebody on television talking about it, talking about the fact that the film just doesn't feel big enough because of the films that it has come after, which... Like, personally, couldn't disagree with more. I actually think it's really refreshing in this in this universe to get something that feels more like a Mission Impossible film with actual people in it, which, of, which of course, makes total sense yeah. for the character than Natasha has to stop the end of the world in one of those why didn't they call the rest of the Avengers sort of scenarios, yeah. which has happened from time to time. Yeah, I agree completely. I think that... Um it's a shame that, for, yes, as you said, this is easily the most action movie of the MCU movies. For the first hour in particular, this feels much more like, as you say, a Mission Impossible than it does a superhero movie. And there is a point where that flips a little, but even in the second half, I think they keep it much more grounded than they perhaps do in other movies. And and I, much like I'm guessing you do, like the stakes. I like that it's a much more personal story. Um, you know, the bad guy, yes, at the end, there's a master plan that's going to basically destroy the world as there always is but that's not why she's fighting it she's fighting it for very personal reasons so i yeah i'm with you there even the person like the one character that has superhuman abilities um the character played by david harbour whose name is red guardian guardian yep um like actually a really i i really dug the kind of low key reveal yeah. of the fact that this guy is Soviet Captain America, basically. Yeah. When he, yeah. when he just flips that trailer and it's not even a, it's not, you know, wide angle lens close to the ground looking up big hero shot. It's kind of just a observational shot on a reasonably long lens of David Harbour just flipping this thing. It was like, oh, okay, yeah. that's okay. So you were saying before that you have seen every film in the MCU, most of them I'm guessing only once. Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Yeah. I the don't ones know. That I've, there'd, there'd be a bunch I've seen- Repeat because there like there's some MCU films that I find thoroughly enjoyable. Um, the first Iron Man film, the first Avengers film, um, Civil War, for instance, I think is a really enjoyable film. I yeah, I'm big fan of Civil War. However, I have only seen it once, and it did come out now five years ago. This is the first MCU film I've seen where I lost track, where I felt that there wasn't enough. And look, I don't want a film to be bogged down with recaps, not at all. But this is the 24th film, and this is the first one that I felt really just had an expectation on the audience that you would come in with prior knowledge. And for me, I have seen most of them. And the ones that this references and, and comes in the timeline of, I have seen. And yet I still was like, well, hang on, wait, why is she why is she being hunted? Why is she not with the Avengers? I forgot all that stuff for me. And yeah, I don't like think there's enough of- explanation around that kind of stuff. I think the- I mean, they check off on that early on with William Hurt bobbing up to cash a check, I guess. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how many- uh, I don't know how many films they have him under contract for, but it's kind of crazy that 
that Hurt just bobs up once yeah. every three years or something <laughs> in one of these movies to deliver, like, four lines. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Um, so I was, like, personally, I was fine with, with where we were, and that's being by no means um, a real MCU head. Um, and it's- I mean, it's got to be tough when you're approaching one of these scripts, I would think, because you need to service people who are like you and me who are happy to sit down and watch it and hope that they have a good time. Yeah. Whereas also giving enough for people who feel the way about this the way I do about Star Wars, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it's I had forgotten, you know, th- there are several kind of reveals of characters in this film that are kind of done in such a overblown fashion that I was like, am I meant to know who this is? When- David Harbour first appears in that opening scene where they're children and the camera doesn't show his face for the first minute. It kind of tracks him walking in, his feet, his hands. And then when it pans up and I'm like, okay, so I meant I meant to know who this is other than just, oh, it's David Harbour. I meant to know this character. And it took me a while to realize, no, I don't. This is his first appearance. And I got a similar vibe later on when, when Scarlett is being helped by her mate Rick, old mate from Handmaid's Tale, And the rapport they have, and this is now taking place five years ago in the past. We haven't seen this guy since. And it's a little bit like, well, this is a weird character introduction here. (laughs) He is a kind of weird character. It's like he can, it's like, wait, this guy's responsible for for this jet super jet that she has? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) We never heard of him before or since. It's just like, okay. (laughs) I believe at one point she says something about him being like a brother to her or something. And I'm like, well, really? Because we've spent 24 movies with you never heard of this guy. Yeah. Also creepy because he's clearly keen as. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Got to be said, though, that if I was going to hide away somewhere, Norway is probably where I would do it. Yeah. Lovely country. And I love that when you watch- would love to go back. I love that when you watch the end credits, they thank the Norway government. They actually went there for like that one or two shots. Um, more power to them. I would <laughs> happily, would it, yeah. <laughs> I would happily go back. Um, one thing about the Norway sequence: does it track that Natasha Romanoff is the kind of person who would just run out of fuel for her Jenny? No, no, no. Wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> Maybe. Look, okay. Let's let's try and do the script justice if we can. Maybe the baddie siphoned off the fuel. Could happen. Could happen. Yeah. yeah. But it, she, she didn't seem like totally shocked. No, she didn't. She, she wasn't like, where's all my fuel? At? <laughs> she was just like, oh, yeah, I'm out of fuel. Um, which makes me think that she just ran out, which I don't see Natasha Romanoff doing. Um, that's, where, <laughs> that's where we meet a bad guy who I got to the end of this film without knowing the name of this baddie. Um, do, you, do you know? Which baddie are we talking about? The kind, the one in the almost robot suit. I know only because I read it on the Wikipedia page. Yeah, that it's the Taskmaster. <laughs> I can't say it without laughing. It's a it really sounds- fucked name. It sounds like something for Austin Powers. See, but here's the thing: is this the first appearance of this villain? I'm assuming that it is. But it's f- f- as far as my memory goes. This is also the first appearance of the big baddie who's controlling Taskmaster. And <laughs> it sounds like one of those shitty game shows on the ABC. <laughs> and the host is like dressed as a principal with a ruler that they welcome back to Taskmaster. <laughs> um, yeah, as far as I recall, it's the first appearance of, of the big bad as well. And yet there's a lot of references to and she claims that she thought she killed him in Sokovia but I don't remember him being in Age of Ultron and I this is what I'm talking about where I felt like it was all a little bit muddled mm, right um that's I yeah I think I think that's fair because there's things there that you hear about and if yeah if you haven't seen it again you're like okay wait did that happen in yeah civil war or something or are they just like writing this in now which yeah. to my recollection is that is are. what's happening. Yes. yes. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this exists in the comics. I like. I now know that Taskmaster's <laughs> whole thing <laughs> is that once they've had a fight with someone, they can like mimic. They like know their moves or something. Oh, can okay. Mimic them or something like that. So like once they've once she's fought Black Widow once, she can 
she's just like got her measure or something. I, I don't know, but it's something like that. Um, clearly, though, the most astonishing trait that Taskmaster has is that she's been imbued with the Jason walk. Yes, yes. Because they are running away from her very quickly. And she is just strolling along at her own time, at her own pace, and uh, gaining. Uh, and gaining on the exact them. same thought. <laughs> Incredible stuff, <laughs> Taskmaster. <laughs> and and just one more thing on this segment of the film where she's like, you know, off off the grid, you know, whatever. All in in this world, all of the Avengers, Natasha Romanov absolutely included, because Natasha Romanov not only is an Avenger, she's an Avenger who looks like Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> yeah. She would be more famous than Leo Messi and Beyonce combined. I mean, I don't know who Leo Messi is, but <laughs> yeah, she's definitely more famous than him. I'm guessing it's a sports guy. <laughs> He's very good at sports. Yeah. yeah. He, something with a ball? Is there a yes. ball involved? Yeah, There's tennis. a ball involved. I want to say tennis. You'd be incorrect. Damn it. He just, okay, he just won. He captained his side to a win in the Copa America. Does that help? I mean, it helps that now I know it's a team sport if he captain this side. Yeah. Copa, that sounds like down old South America way. It's 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 football. It's quite a popular sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> that was going to be my guess. <laughs> but no one in Norway, in no one in this town, village in Norway recognises her, I don't think. Yeah, and not only, like, she's she's hiding. Like, she's on the run from authorities, correct? That's my understanding, yes, because clearly William Hurt wants to catch up with her. Like, these guys, they would have that Fast and Furious technology, that God's Eye thing. You know, like, they, it should be easy to track. So then she finally meets up with our girl Flo, and we get a big old chase sequence. Even at this point, I'm kind of bored. I've got to be honest. You, you know that I'm, I, didn't, I didn't like Mission Impossible Fallout. And I don't like this mediocre knockoff of it, <laughs> like which is what the first hour of this film is. It's it's a bad imitation of a Mission Impossible film, a genre that I'm already not the biggest fan of. I I was so bored for the first hour of this film. I'm assuming you liked it more than I did, though. It sounds like I liked it more than you did. I wouldn't say I was like engrossed, and I don't think there's any denying. And I think this is where you're going that. The film gets better, as does every scene involving Florence Pugh. Yes. Not only Florence Pugh, David Harbour. I, I think that the scenes, and especially the scenes with the three of them, they actually do have a very nice kind of family dynamic and chemistry, which is something that we haven't seen in the MCU before. It feels a little bit different. So, uh, yeah, I actually found it so, like, miles better once they got into it, which you would think, you know... That's the point where it becomes less grounded and more superhero-like. You would think that that's where it would feel less real, and yet I felt the exact opposite way. For me, that's when it really actually fell into a groove and felt like the characters were actual people doing actual things. Yeah, I like. I totally agree that it becomes more enjoyable. The, the dynamic, I mean, specifically, I think, I mean, David Harbour is fantastic in the film, I think, actually, with what he's doing, with what he's working with. Total, total fan of him, as usual. But- I mean, at the core of it, and like most importantly, is the fact that Pew and Johansson actually, I think, actually really do work very well together. They do, and yeah. Like, Pew is given more of the laughs. Her taking the piss out of the superhero <laughs> stance is like legitimately very funny stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very rarely do I actually laugh in these movies. Like, there's yeah. a lot of kind of quips and stuff, but that was actually funny. <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. Her, I could listen to Florence Pugh talk about a jacket with many pockets all day long. <laughs> yes, um, yes. <laughs> really, really good stuff. Um, and and while like we've said it, and I think a lot of people agree that Pugh kind of steals a lot of these scenes. I think Scarlett Johansson is just being just a pretty awesome pro in just. While she's not, like, scoring all the points, she's giving yeah. a lot of assists, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I think the majority of that comes down to the, the screenplay and the direction. As I said, this is not a Black Widow film. Black Widow is not the focus, even for the first hour when she's virtually the only character. She's still not the focus of the story. She's She is not 
the lead in this film. This is a film about setting up Florence Pugh, and I'm assuming to an extent David Harbour as well. I'm guessing that we'll see Red Guardian pop up again. But that's really what this film is. And I think it's a shame because, as you say, the chemistry between them is wonderful. It hurts me that we probably won't get to see Florence Pugh and Scarlett doing this again together. No, not unless... New Black Widow goes to see Red Skull or something and demands (laughs) an audience with her dead adopted sister. (laughs) Um, All right, so a couple of things for me that I have reasonable issues with. One is we've had this continuing thing through Romanov's story in, in the MCU films about the red in her ledger, as it's been repeatedly referred to, uh, and her making up for past sins. And while I have not re-watched Endgame since it came out, my recollection is that that was kind of part of her whole, no, it's going to be me, not you, Hawkeye, that- yeah. That yeah. takes the dives because I'm still atoning for things. That's my memory is that there's a whole scene where they're kind of fighting each other as to who's going to jump. Yeah. Now, like I said, I haven't seen the movie since it came out. I could be getting this wrong. That's entirely possible. But this film has absolved her of anything she did ever before becoming a good guy, um, by which this film means an American. Um, so has this mind control- plot device not just kind of taken away this character's drive for every film she's been in what i was a bit confused about this too and this is where i think things get real murky with the retconning of stuff her and her sister clearly went to the red room at the same time which that every time they said that it just made me laugh because i haven't even seen it but it just made me think of 50 shades of gray (laughs) I'm exactly I'm exact the same. All I could think haven't of Haven't seen it. Oh, shit. Haven't they're going to get paddled on the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so, like, we see it. And obviously, Scarlett had already been there. She was the older sister. And, and she said, I don't want to go back. But clearly, they, they went back at the same time. And Jamie Dornan was waiting. Yeah. And yet, Scarlett didn't get done with the mind control. But Flo did. Because- there's one scene where Flo actually says to Scarlet, you know, this is different. What you had was um, not actual mind control. It was like programming, you know, l- like Clockwork Orange style is what I'm imagining. Whereas with Florence, it was a chemical. And she says that at one point. This was a chemical brain thing. I don't know why it was different. I don't know why they did that to Flo and not to Scarlet. That's never explained. I don't know why Scarlet got out of it so much earlier it's never explained whether she escaped or i mean to my knowledge i I could be wrong and it could be in an earlier film that i'm forgetting but that whole thing just got a little murky to me yeah so i didn't like that because i think it makes the character of natasha more one-dimensional yeah and then the way she gets out of this is like i just need a good knock on the head yeah are you telling me that in all the scrapes that Natasha Romanoff has been in, she's she never copped a blow the equivalent nerve. of her banging her head on the table. That's like, the thing. really because when was it Rachel Weiss who said to her that you need to sever the nerve? I was like, well, to me, the word sever is a bit different to banging your head on the table. I was picturing she was going to have to knife her face, <laughs> like because as you say, she would have taken plenty of knocks. Like those nerves would not be right. And also, why did she have that part of it, but not the actual brain? Washing. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, why did he insert the pheromones but not the actual brainwashing part? It doesn't I I, make I sense. Possibly wasn't concentrating <laughs> really enough on those scenes Look, of people just talking about red yeah. mist. And here's the thing. I'm pr- I probably- We probably don't need to talk about it. It's a comic book movie and it is what it is. It didn't annoy me at the time. It's only kind of bothering me now as we continue <laughs> to talk about it. But it's just one of those things that's like- Come on, guys. Consistency, internal consistency matters to me. <laughs> I tell you what does bother me, that after surfing down building parts falling from the sky, because, I mean, sure, um, <laughs> they land on the ground and, oh, red vial, <laughs> yeah. perfectly intact, right <laughs> yeah. here at my feet. 
<laughs> you beauty. <laughs> that was convenient. There also seems to be a lot more of those vials. They just seem to be never ending. Because at first she had, I don't know, like a handful. Yeah, it was like remember, 10 or something. And she was saying, oh, you know, this is it. This is all we have. I don't know how many she threw in that red room that made that giant puff of mist that, you know, unbrainwashed all of them. And there were still leftovers. <laughs> like, <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Um, what did you think of the action scenes in the film? You know, I'm thinking like the escape scene from the prison with where they first break out David Harbour, the the big finale fight on the the crashing red room. The I think I think probably I'm. Hmm. I wonder if I'm right in saying this that every action scene in the film I like less than the one before it. Yeah, I think that's fa- probably yeah. because they start smaller and get bigger. I do, well, I kind of think it peaks in the middle because, as I said, I wasn't super into the opening. I didn't care about the car chase, stuff like that. The best action scene to me was the prison escape, which I know is ridiculously over the top. And when the avalanche starts and you're like, wow, this is silly. They're going to murder everybody in this prison. Everyone. <laughs> all, all them c- to die. <laughs> yeah. But um, to me, it was it was a fun scene. And, and I think that's where the effects look best as well. The final action scene is some dodgy looking shit and how many times did they want to jump away from flames how many times have we seen that trope it's literally a meme now you know like that running in slow-mo and jumping with the flames behind you three times in quick succession that happened (laughs) now we've said that this film feels more like you know kind of action films of i mean not only modern ones but also Ones of yesteryear, you know, it could it could be called a bit bondy yep. at times. And maybe that's most apparent in The Big Bad, played by Ray Winston, who <laughs> turns up very late in the piece yeah. to do little more than go full Bond villain and just explain. Explain everything. 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 Yeah, I must have missed something too. How did she get his ring? I didn't understand that at the end. After he'd left and she then grabbed the ring and unlocked the, the system. I think she just black widowed some shit. We didn't I mean, see that's, that's it happen, what she's though. Meant, that's what she's meant to. Well, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but we as the audience should at least see that and not be wondering, wait, how did that happen? <laughs> I'm okay with her with her skills being above um, our uh, our eyesight to comprehend in, in the moment. Like, you're a, you're a mad fan of illusions. I do love a good you like, illusion. You like some sleight of hand? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, my like my biggest problem with other than just like, what are you doing, Ray Winston? You're a you are a fine actor. What is going on here? <laughs> um, is like trying to make me care about the fact that this guy's been like an apparent international puppet master for decades is not going to work when two hours and ten minutes into a film you have someone just say. I've been an international puppet master all this time. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> You've done nothing, and nor has this film has done nothing to make me care about that fact. Yeah. Absolutely. So, like, whatever, just hurry up and die. <laughs> yeah. While we're talking about um, usually good actors turning into less than stellar performances, we haven't talked about Rachel Weiss yet. Our gal. Who I adore, Rachel Weiss. I, lo- I love her very, very much. And she she's still got it. You know, like, she turned in some great performances in recent years. This is not and one she's, of them. And she's still got it. Oh, oh yeah. I know, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Just slam and hottie. <laughs> um, this is not one of those performances. This is abysmal. She's barely caring. And I don't even- Why even- Just let her be American. Don't even pretend that she's doing an accent because, quite frankly, she's not. It's fucking awful. But to let her be American, she'd have to do an accent. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. But that's what's weird about it because she's not she's not talking in her typical British accent, but she's not doing a very good Russian accent either. Like, what are you doing there, no. RW? And just throw in the odd word clearly said with an English accent. It's like, oh, didn't bother with that word. Yeah. It's messy. She's clear, like it's absolutely the messiest accent in the film. I like. I was amazed at how well both Pew and and Harbour held their accents. Um, Rachel Weisz ain't doing it for me. No, it's, it's distracting no. to be honest. But 
Yeah. I mean, mostly I'm just like, whatever, Rachel, you get a pass for everything. <laughs> We, we're, we're coming off um, an episode that we did on Heat. Yep. Where there's a character called Wayne Grow. Yeah. Who uh, there was a bit of life wound up imitating art, which uh, had me thinking about one of your one of your favourite gags. Um, and look, I love it as much as anyone. <laughs> the the tried and tested. Didn't, didn't even, even know, know they were filming. <laughs> didn't even know they were filming. Yeah, it's a so classic. I, it's a classic. Yeah. You can throw it in almost any movie about any character, and it's always funny. <laughs> well, I would like I would like to test that theory because I'm going to run with this for as long as it works. Which who knows might be one week, or or, or no week since it will only last for one week. Yeah, but let me ask you this, Billy, for the first time. Okay, this film's winner of the perpetual <laughs> Wayne Grow Cup. <laughs> That didn't which even know actor, they were filming a war. Which actor in this film didn't even know they were filming? That's a tough one. You know what? <laughs> Rachel Weiss. Because clearly they never said role. But if they'd said action, she would have started doing her accent. <laughs> That's a so, wow. So she that clearly didn't know thing. they were filming. <laughs> the first winner of the Wayne Grote Cup is one of the is a modern great. <laughs> wow. Oh, this is fun. I think we should do this every week. <laughs> All right. So, all in all, how are you scoring this? Would you say is this top tier MCU for you? Middle tier MCU for me, um, which is to say, a middle tier film. <laughs> um, it was like, was it a decent enough bit of entertainment to chuck on? Yeah, sure. Will I ever watch it again? Nah. Five out of ten. Yep. I'm a little lower. This is middle to low for me. This is a four out of ten for me. I kind of struggled a little, and I. I was struggling between a four and a five purely based on the performances because once Pew and Harbour came into it and I feel like Scarlett's performance was lifted as well just by the chemistry at that point, I enjoyed the last hour. The problem is that the first was so dull for me, I just it balanced out and I ended on a four. So, bit of a shame. All right, what are we getting to next week, buddy? Next week, we'll be getting our Soderbergh on with his new... Heist flick, no sudden move. Yes, director HBO Max Soderbergh, no sudden move. I'm keen on that one. I know very little about it. I watched the trailer last night in preparation for for watching the film. It's it's just a teaser. You see nothing. It's like it's very stylized. It's 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 like the you know when a character walks on in a bad movie and it like freeze frames and brings up their name. That's all the trailer is. So okay. It's just that over and over for like seven different actors. So I have no idea what I'm getting in for there. All right. In the meantime, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do that at wewatchedathing.com or wewatchedathing at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under the handle at wewatchedathing. If you want to help support the show, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash wewatchedathing, and we'll catch you next week. Watch a movie, folks. Watch a movie, folks.